Walt Disney Company shaking up its boardroom yet again. Former Morgan Stanley CEO James Gorman set to become chairman of Disney's board early next year. One of the board's biggest decisions will be naming CEO Bob Iger's successor, which Gorman revealed will happen early in 2026. Joining us now is Alex Weprin, media and business writer at The Hollywood Reporter. And thank you for joining us here. So this is all about succession, but maybe you can go into some of the nuances. Yeah, I mean, look, there's really no question that the elevation of James Gorman to chairman is really about figuring out who is going to succeed Bob Iger, especially because Gorman just led a pretty successful succession himself at Morgan Stanley. Um, Disney never officially said that they were planning to kind of name his successor in 2025. However, I think that was the expectation in the, in the entertainment industry. And so the fact that they're saying that they're, they plan to do it in early 2026 does imply that there are ways away I'm figuring out who the right person is that can succeed Iger, given his track record as CEO. And, and Alex, they say here, so they're going to announce the successor uh, in early 26, but he's not going to leave until I think the end of, of 2026. Is the point? I mean, does that timeline kind of make sense to you? Is the point there? Listen, Iger thinks I this should be kind of slow and steady. What Iger has been telling people is that whenever they identify his successor, he wants to stick around to kind of help guide them, to help them learn the ropes, because it's really impossible for any new CEO to understand all the different parts of Disney. You've got the theme park business, which is, you know, hugely spread out across the world. Uh, they've got, you know, tens of thousands of employees. It's really operational in nature. And then you've got the entertainment side of the business, which is much more functional on kind of developing content and IP. And so it's going to be impossible to find someone that has the ex experience in both areas. So they want Iger to kind of help guide them, mentor whoever the eventual successor is to help them succeed. You know, Alex, succession has been such a tumultuous issue here at Disney. You know, Iger comes back in 2022 for an initial period, you know, after his hand-picked guy, Bob Chapek, is ousted, um, then the contract gets extended. I mean, do we think this time it's for real? He's really, he's really gonna retire in 2026? That's what he's telling people, but he said that before, you know? Uh, so, uh, you know, I think the expectation is yes, this is his actual retirement. He does wanna leave. He wants to leave a good impression. You know, the fact that he failed last time, the fact that Bob Chapek didn't work out and he had to come back, I think he views that as a real stain in his reputation and he wants to make it right. Um, I, I don't think he's gonna come back a second time. I think this is gonna be it. And I think that's why perhaps they're taking so long is that they really wanna make sure they get the right person this time. We've heard from activists, investors before. Um, I'm just wondering how you think they're reacting to this latest news. Do we think that uh, they're kind of blessing this arrangement? Uh, do they want an accelerated time frame? Anything along those lines? I mean, Iger's return definitely boosted Disney's stock, especially in the early days. They've had a rough year, you know, just the, the theme parks are slowing down a little bit. Uh, you know, we're seeing that at both Universal and Disney, so it's not just a Disney thing. Um, the fact that they kind of pretty easily beat Nelson Peltz earlier this year, suggests to me that I don't think there's gonna be real activist pressure on Disney in the near term. However, you know, if they're not able to execute on a succession plan, if it seems like it's gonna drag out longer, I would not be surprised if activists return. Any thoughts, Alex, on who might take the reins from Bob Iger here? I mean, the four division heads reportedly competing here. Yeah, look, internally, the two names that keep popping up most frequently are Dana Walden, who's the co-head of the of the film and TV studio, and Josh Tomorrow, who runs a theme parks and experiences business. Uh, you've got Jimmy Pataro at ESPN. He's also in the mix. Asad Ayaz, I've heard, he's the CMO. So there are you know at least a handful of internal candidates. Any one of them could theoretically succeed Iger. They may want to get some more hands-on experience in different parts of the company. Externally, it's a lot harder to say. You know, uh, do you go to another entertainment company and choose an entertainment executive? Do you try and find an operational executive that can kind of run the operations in the theme parks? So there's different ways to approach it. But internally, Pataro, Walden, Damaro, those are kind of the, the names that are, you're really hearing. We have time for one more and I'll give you the floor. Anything we didn't touch on here that you'd just like to get out there? <laughs> Look, Disney is, is probably the most important company in the entertainment business outside of Netflix. And so, you know, I think people are watching really closely uh, what how the succession process plays out, because after all, you know, if they do go with an internal candidate like a Walden or tomorrow, there's a good chance that the person or people who don't get the job, they may be looking elsewhere. So it could actually lead to succession drama at other companies after uh, this one plays out. Alex, great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for that, your time and insight. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks for having me.